I find freedom to be the most important issue facing any human being today. Because without freedom, then life is pointless. The more dependent you become on centralized power, the more easily you are led around. You see, the one thing I've always maintained is that I am an American Indian. I am not a Native American. I'm not politically correct. Everyone who's born in the Western Hemisphere is a Native American. We are all Native Americans. And if you notice, I put American before my ethnicity. I'm not a hyphenated African American or Irish American or Jewish American or Mexican American. The only way you can be free is to know that you are worthwhile as a distinct human being. All European tradition, Marxism included, has conspired to defy the natural order of all things. Mother Earth has been abused. The powers have been abused. And this cannot go on forever. No theory can alter that simple fact. Mother Earth will retaliate. The whole environment will retaliate. And the abusers will be eliminated. Things come full circle. Back to where they started. That's revolution. We Indians do not teach that there is only one God. We know that everything has power, including the most inanimate, inconsequential things. Stones have power. A blade of grass has power. Trees and clouds and all our relatives in the insect and animal world have power. We believe we must respect that power by acknowledging its presence, by honoring the power of the spirits in that way, it becomes our power as well. It protects us. Before American Indian movement, Indians were dispirited, defeated, and culturally dissolving. People were ashamed to be Indian, you didn't see the young people wearing braids or chokers or ribbon shirts in those days. Hell, I didn't wear them. People didn't sun dance. They didn't sweat. They were losing their languages. Then there was that spark at Alcatraz and we took off. Man, we took a ride across this country. We put Indians and Indian rights smack dab in the middle of the public consciousness for the first time since the so-called Indian Wars. Freedom is for everyone, whatever lifestyle they choose, as long as it's peaceful and honest. There is a mistaken belief that the word Indian refers somehow to the country India. When Columbus washed up on the beach in the Caribbean, he was not looking for a country called India. Europeans were calling that country Hindustan in 1492. Columbus called the tribal people he met Indio from the Italian in Dio meaning in God. I do not want to be civilized. I want to be liberated. I'm a human being. I'm not anyone's mascot. 
and I'm America's conscience. And that's what they don't want to look at. They would rather look at a cartoon character than at the deceit of this country and this government. Indian policy has been brought down upon the American people and the American people are the new Indians of the 21st century. It's just unconscionable that America has become so stupid. True to your own ancestors, therefore true to yourself. Imagine going to the Holy Land in Israel, whether you're a Christian, a Jew, or a Muslim, and start covering up the mountain of Zion. It's an insult to our entire being. It's bad enough getting four white faces carved in up there on Mount Rushmore, the shrine of hypocrisy. Golden eagles don't mate with bald eagles. Deer don't mate with antelope. Gray wolves don't mate with red wolves. Just look at domesticated animals, at mongrel dogs and mixed breed horses, and you'll know the great mystery didn't intend them to be that way. We weakened the species and introduced disease by mixing what should be kept separate. Among humans, intermarriage weakens the respect people have for themselves and for their traditions. It undermines clarity of spirit and mind. What the American Indian movement says is that American Indians are the Palestinians of the United States, and the Palestinians are the American Indians of Europe. That's our charge as ancestors of unborn generations to once again become free. May the Great Spirit continue to guide and protect the paths of you and your loved ones. Indians in America are yet to be considered human beings, even though the Pope issued a papal bull in 1898 that declared us to be human beings. But to show you the institutional racism, the sports teams are still using the Indians as mascots. You can't talk about the environment. You can't talk about political correctness, affirmative action, and all other innumerable things that freedom is about, unless you have a free society based upon the integrity of the individual. If you have a responsible society, these other issues will not come up in a responsible society, and that is what freedom is all about. It takes a strong effort on the part of each American Indian not to become Europeanized. The strength for this effort can only come from the traditional ways, the traditional values that our elders retain. If you learn from an experience, that's good. So nothing bad happened to you. So I'd much rather get across the concept of freedom. It's what's important to Indian children. The only way you can be free is to know that you are worthwhile as a distinct human being. 
Otherwise, you become what the colonizers have designed, and that is a limbing. Get in line, punch all the right keys, and die. So Indian policy has become institutionalized, and the result has been that American people have become more dependent on government, and that the American people have become more dependent on corporations. They don't understand that a slice of the pie isn't the whole pie, but they wonder why they are always hungry. An oral society develops both sides of your brain, and the utilization of brain is more complete than in a linear educational model. The written word limits your brain capability by immediately focusing on one area. You don't have any peripheral vision. It immediately divorces you from the environment. I want my people to be free. Americans have to be free. Hollywood hasn't changed. It's the most racist, anti-Indian institution in the world. When a woman grabs my braids and says, how cute, I grab her breasts and say, how cute. She never touches me again. The United States is a fake country. In the government schools, which are referred to as public schools, Indian policy has been instituted there. And it's a policy where they do not encourage, in fact, discourage critical thinking and the creation of ideas. I don't want to be remembered as an activist. I want to be remembered as an American Indian patriot. I knew at that young age that going to the Bureau of Indian Affairs was useless, absolutely useless. I grew up having no faith in the bureaucracy of government. America always puts forth this phony melting pot theory, but it's a reality now. They couldn't accomplish the melting pot economically. They couldn't accomplish it politically or through some education and science. But America has become a consumer society. And I see young people in the cities of all colors and races hanging out together over consumerism. Young people and Indian people need to know that we existed in the 20th century. We need to know who our heroes are and to know what we have done and accomplished in this century. I've always thought it was arrogant to write about yourself, particularly when you're still alive. I'd like to talk about free markets Information in the computer age is the last genuine free market left on earth. Except those free markets where indigenous people are still surviving, and that's basically becoming limited. I say to the Christians and every missionary on the reservations, you're welcome to have a church here if you can support yourself. But if these churches can't support themselves, then take the hint and quit using our poverty for your direct mail solicitations. Being an Indian means living with the land. And the only way we'll be able to do that is to gain our freedom.
colonialism has completed the destruction of the American Indian and the United States, the cultural destruction. Being is a spiritual proposition. Gaining is a material act. Traditionally, American Indians have always attempted to be the best people they could. Part of that spiritual process was, and is, to give away wealth. To discard wealth in order not to gain. The American Indian movement I was associated with, I'm very proud of. We were a revolutionary, militant organization whose purpose was spiritually first. And that's how I want to be remembered. I tell the truth, and I expose myself as a weak, misguided, misdirected, dysfunctional human being I used to be. I have often wondered how to best decolonize my people. It must be done one human being at a time. Without that kind of help, Western society does not allow people to come to terms with their feelings. With honesty and therapy, my people can be made whole again. Children in poverty aren't trying to get out of poverty. They're just trying to rip off a pair of Nikes. So we Indian people are a microcosm of what's happening in America. We are now consumers and our culture has gone. Indian people are relics. We do not exist in the present. Tourists came around and looked into our teepees. That those were the homes we chose to live in didn't bother them at all. They untied the door, opened the flap, and barged right in, touching our things, poking through our bedrolls, inspecting everything. It boggles my mind that tourists feel they have the God-given right to intrude everywhere. I've always considered myself a man of integrity. As a leader of the American Indian movement and of Indian people, I will stand that test against anyone at any time, anywhere. <laughs>